Hey guys, Tabs McCaffrey here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back. Welcome to my channel if you're new. I am a Canadian reseller and I sell mostly clothes but kind of dabble in like shoes, accessories, hard goods. Love clothing. Let's get this going. Today's video is on what sold. We had a meh, a meh week and I just I don't know. I, there's a few things I'm going to go over at the end. Actually, I'm going to tell you what I think contributed to the sales this week and why they are the way they are, and then what I need to change going forward. And these are probably really simple things that you can do as well. So stay tuned. We're going to go over that at the end. So this is for the week of May 3rd to 9th, and our total sales were $923 not too shabby, pretty good, happy with it. Throughout this week and over the last few weeks, I've been able to maintain a good average sale price. My goal right now is $25. If you're a reseller, you're gonna understand my pains. You know how hard it is to get that ASP up. Okay, so all of our sales were on Poshmark, so that was $923. I sent out a total of 25 packages and 36 items, so not too bad. Kind of a slower week, definitely, for the number of items that we've been sending out. Typically, we're seeing somewhere around like 45 to 55. You know what? Sometimes I'm just not complaining on the slow weeks because it's nice to have a breather, especially since I work another job. Okay, so our average sale price was $25.63. I also got to shout out our highest sale because it was pretty awesome, and I had an Ikea bag full of jeans. I've said this in the last few videos that I finally got listed, like my death pile of jeans. They were a pair of Levi's 501 straight leg jeans and they sold for 50 bucks, so that was pretty good. There was a lot of questions on them. I actually feel like I learned a lot about Levi's jeans that I didn't know before, and I, yeah, yeah. Anyways, okay, let's kick this off. I got my computer set up, so I'm sorry if I'm looking down, but this is kind of where I have all my tabs open to go over it. It was a pretty slow start to the week, and I definitely get nervous when the sales aren't kind of rolling in at the beginning of the week, because it means that I have to work twice as hard towards the weekend. First sale was a North Face Technical Black Fleece Lined Jacket. This sold for $35. If you are outsourcing, keep an eye out for North Face. We have a lot of luck selling it in the closet. Definitely make sure you're looking at the colors and the style. Check the comps on it. Usually they resell for a pretty good value and I can easily double what I'm buying it for. I think I actually had it listed somewhere around 50, but I had sourced it pretty cheap. Next sale was a pair of Levi's 550 Classic Relaxed Tapered Mom Jeans in a size 12. These sold for $40. Uh, yeah, you need to be picking up tapered leg mom jeans right now because they are selling. I know it like people are like, don't buy skinny. I would still buy skinny because I still sell a ton of skinny jeans. I'm definitely keeping my eye out for like tapered leg, mom style, straight leg, a little bit of flare. I don't know. I feel like the lighter wash jeans are moving for flare, not necessarily the darker. And boot cut. I can always sell boot cut in our closet. It may not sell for a high value, but usually for $20, $25. So that's not too bad. Uh, next sale was a pink gray graphic print crew neck sweatshirt in a size large. This sold for $30. I had listed this literally the day before and I think I had like three offers. I knew that this would sell pretty quickly because Victoria's Secret pink clothes tend to do pretty good but it was also a very like neutral tone. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't something, I, I don't wanna say obnoxious, but sometimes their clothes are a little bit obnoxious and like the colors and the prints and things like that. This was a classic sweater. My only regret is that maybe I should have listed it a little bit higher and only because I didn't know that there was gonna be this much action on it. Next item to sell, which was another sweater I had recently listed and just sourced, was this burgundy or maroon Nap Queen graphic sweatshirt in a size large. It sold for $25. It was in fantastic condition, like practically new. And I think I actually sourced this for myself and then I was like, nah, okay, I have like way too many sweaters, guys. Way too many sweaters for a girl that doesn't wear a lot of sweaters. I was like, no, nope, I'm gonna let it go. I sourced it for a good price. I'm happy with selling it. Next bundle to sell. This didn't quite sell for what I thought it would, so the offer price was $32, which I accepted. I did source the dress with a 40% off coupon, but I feel like I still paid somewhere around $8 for it. It was a Millie Bond 
blue tropical print summer dress in a size large. There was no tags in it. I actually had to search the RN number. So if you ever find an item with no tags in it, if you look at the tag, usually like on the inside seam, like on a side seam where they'll have like material content, how to wash, things like that. You'll also find an RN number. And that RN number, if you go into Google and you just type, I usually do like RN clothing number and then I'll put the the number or whatever it is. It'll show you who the manufacturer is for that item. That's how I knew this was a Millie Bond. I thought it would be worth a little bit more and I picked this one up on print. The second item in this bundle was a Licenza purple chemise dress, lingerie in a size small. This was listed at $19, bundle for $32, but I probably had about $10 in cost of goods and my earnings were at $25.28. Small profit, but I was taking it because sales were slow and this was on Tuesdays. Not much happening at the beginning of the week. Next sale was, and this was now going into Wednesday, as a Piccolina's La Palma Mary Jane shoes in a size 41. So they were quite a large size. They sold for $24. I've had these for quite a while. I feel like they were actually even maybe in like an Ikea bag full of shoes that were like a death pile item. I was happy with it. Sometimes I think, why do I sit on all these items? You know, we literally make zero dollars on items sitting in our death pile, right? And this just goes to show these are a couple items. Actually, there's lots of items in this week's sales that I have had sitting in death piles, just money, just sitting there waiting. Okay, next sale was a pink Swiss dot bishop sleeve boho dress in a size large. This sold for $35. I had thrifted this with the 40% off coupon. I did pay up for the item and I wanna say probably 10 or $12. So it wasn't a fantastic return. I definitely picked it up on style and thought, like seriously thought that this would do well. It had a ton of likes, but just no one buying it. So likes don't always mean like diddly squat actually, because unless it's selling, uh, I don't know. And I've sent out like so many offers to likes on this. I wish we could see on an item like how many offers we've sent out on it total. Like I, I think it only shows the ones that are current. I have sent out a lot of offers for this dress. Next item was an Obey Propaganda gray embroidered hoodie sweater. This was a size small. It sold for $20. I have sold a ton of Obey Propaganda clothing items, usually women's sweaters. They usually sell between $20 and $30. So this would actually be a brand that if you see kind of like a classic hoodie sweater, I'd grab it. They do pretty well. If you're paying, you know, three or four bucks for it, definitely worth the flip. And I usually don't hold on to them for too long, you know, maybe a couple weeks. That's okay. I will always grab them when I see them for a good price. Next bundle was a two piece bundle. This sold for $25. It was a Vogue print black sheer baby doll lingerie in a size large and a vintage sentiments floral slip dress uh, lingerie in a size smaller. This bundle was built and kind of a low offer sent in, which I wasn't really comfortable letting them go for. I have had both of these items for a while. Not really sure why, maybe more because of brand. I don't know, because I've had really good luck with these styles before. Lingerie has kind of simmered out for me, and I don't know if it's just people are out and about and don't really care about lingerie right now. Anyways, I did send her another offer for 25, kind of countering back, which she accepted. So I was happy to at least get some money out of them. My earnings were $19.75 and I probably had about $6 in inventory into these. So not, again, not a fantastic flip, but the week was so slow I was taking it. <laughs> okay, this is on to May 7th now. I had a NYX Wingman contour bra in an eight plus nude. This sold for $36. NYX usually sells, this is one of those bolo brands. If you ever see NYX bras out in the wild where you're sourcing and you're paying a reasonable price. Now for this bra, I think I paid about $8 for it and my earnings were 28. So I still made $20 off this bra, which I'm happy with. And that's kind of what makes me think of it as a bolo because not only did I double, I made back my money plus double. I'm not familiar with all of their styles and something I always have to look up. I did sell a maternity bra that was a NYX one and it didn't sell for as much as I thought it would. This wing woman one, I just grabbed another one which was new with tags and I think I paid about $10 for it. Same thing, if it sells for $40 new with tags or 45, it's a pretty good profit. Add that 
to your bolo list. I think what I'm gonna do is you go down in the description, I'm gonna create just kind of a list of all the bolo brands that we talk about in this video just to make it easy for you. So if you don't catch them as I'm going through them in the video, just head down to the description and they'll be down there um, underneath the timestamps. Okay, so next bundle was a two-piece bundle. This sold for $105. And in this bundle was a Joseph Siebel Georgia green sandals in a size 39 and a pair of Merle Aventor cuff waterproof tall boots in a size nine and a half. Actually, now that I look at this, those were listed at $60. This is actually my highest ticket item that sold this week. And she created the bundle and just purchased it with my standard 15% off when you bundle. Funny thing is these boots, I actually thrifted them for myself. I thought they would be good for us out at the mountain cabin and I could use them for walking the dog and just kind of being outside. When I tried them on, I just didn't like how they fit on my calf, just the, the feel of them. So I thought I would resell them. They were definitely worth quite a bit of money. They held a really good value. I was happy I was able to make my money back and then some. And those Joseph Siebel, I have a hit and miss. Like, I don't know. Sometimes they do really good, sometimes they don't. So I don't even wanna say that that is a Bolo brand, but if I see them and they're not too worn and they seem to be like a good color, I'll grab them. And just going back to those Merle boots, add that to your bowl list. Merle stuff sells, it holds a value, and it usually does pretty good. Even their runners, their hiking shoes, all that stuff, their sandals. I can sell a pair of their sandals for over $30 usually and worth adding to your list. Next bundle to sell was a two-piece bundle. This was a California Moonrise Pink Crepe Boho Shorts in a size medium. I rarely find this brand where it hasn't been marked up like crazy and I got a pretty good deal on these. I think I paid maybe four or five bucks for them and also in the bundle was a white to pink ombre maxi dress in a size four which I had thrifted kind of out by our cabin. There's a thrift store there we had stopped in quite a while ago. I like think I paid three bucks for it so I was happy with this bundle. Sent her an offer for $55 with a shipping discount and this is actually where that new shipping discount comes into effect. I paid $3.50 for the shipping discount. My earnings were $39.49 which is pretty good considering what I had for inventory costs on this. Next item to sell was an Aritzia TNA Polar Half Zip Fleece Sweater in an Extra Small. It sold for $37. I had recently thrifted this one as well. I think it was maybe in my closet for a week. This is probably the third TNA Polar Half Zip Fleece Sweater I have sold and I've sold them in various colors. If you do not have Aritzia on your bolo list, uh, definitely add it on. So they are the store and then there's kind of like brands underneath. So Wilfred, Babaton, TNA, they have like a bunch of different de um, lines of denim that they carry and there's some other brands but I, I feel like Wilford and Babaton are those brands that really hold a value and then always their jean brands will will sell pretty good. So TNA, you do have to look up the item when you find it. Maybe take a picture of it, pop it into Google Lens. If you don't know how to use Google Lens, I'm gonna pop a link up here and you can watch a video on how to add that into your little reseller toolbox. But I definitely try and take a picture of it if I don't already re recognize the style and see how it does because some of them are really old. Aritzia has been around for a while. And I find some of their older items just don't do very well, especially their older sweaters that have like their TNA logo on them. I don't know, they just don't resell for very much anymore. Okay, next bundle was a two-piece bundle and this was kind of a cool piece. It was an Adidas green tie-dyed hoodie sweater in a 2XL which I actually tie-dyed myself. I thrifted this strictly to tie-dye because green tie-dye is awesome and I know people like the items. And then also a pair of Vans pink leather old school shoes in an eight and a half. And these were from my personal closet. I've had them for a couple years. I just don't wear them. So I was like going through our shoe closet and I was like, I gotta pull some things and sell them because I've thrifted some new items and I wanna make room in our, in our shoe closet. This bundle sold for $70. I was very happy with that. I do think that Adidas sweater I paid about $15 for. All right, next item to sell was a Northern Reflections blue windbreaker jacket in an XL. This sold for $25. I just thrifted this maybe two, three weeks ago. Pretty quick flip. I think I paid about $4 for it, not too shabby. I love my Northern Reflections, you guys know that. I wanna actually add that to the bolo list because I love grandma style and I think it's worth grabbing. And 
If you find something, just search it up really quick. Depending on the style, obviously not every shirt and every sweater and every cardigan holds value, but there's definitely like a niche of their clothing that do sell well. I would definitely add that on and do your own research on the brand. Okay, and like you can go into Posh or eBay, search by that brand, look at the solds and look at the styles that are selling and the colors and things like that. You guys know how to do the research, so do your own research. This is just bolos that I find I have luck with in my closet. Definitely you don't have to pick up every single one of these when you find them, but it just gives you an idea to maybe research these brands a little bit more and see if they would work in your closet. All right, next pair of shoes that sold were a pair of Naturalizer Brown Cyrus Leather Slingbacks slingback sandals in a size eight. They sold for $33. I love naturalizer leather shoes if I can find them for a good price and I'm thinking like under $7, I'll probably grab them because they do really good. And this style, like this kind of grandma style, is selling like crazy. So anytime I can find this style of shoe, and again, for a good price, because a lot of times I see these kind of shoes and they're like $15.99. Like I'm not making a huge profit. My earnings on these ones were $26. So if I had to pay $15 for it, that's not really a huge profit. Now, when I'm paying like five or six dollars, that's making 20. I'm happy with that. Definitely take a look at what you're picking them up for versus what you can sell them for and then deciding if it's worth it for your business. Next item to sell. So this was my biggest sale, but I don't even know if it really was my biggest sale. It was a pair of Levi's red tag straight leg jeans. These sold for $50. They were in a size 30. I did have to take a bunch of measurements because there was no stretch in these. These bad boys were 100% cotton and you either fit them or you don't. I actually personally don't have a lot of luck with Levi's because I'm kind of like bigger from the waist down, if, if you know what I mean. And their jeans just never fit. I can't pull them up over my thighs. I don't know. Maybe I need to get like the mom style taper leg. If you are a little bit thicker below the waist, let me know what style of Levi's you buy. And I mean like be precise because I may have to hop onto Posh and see if I can find a pair. I'm willing to try them, but I just don't have a lot of luck with them. So yeah, these sold for $50 and I was happy with that sale. I did have quite a few likes and kind of comments on it. They also came out of the death pile. Why I held on to these for five months? I don't know, guys. I really don't know. You just gotta work through those death piles. Even when it's painful, just get them listed out there. Next item to sell was a Tommy Hilfiger pink cold shoulder dress fitted in a size eight. This sold for $18. Man, I thought this would sell for a little bit more. Yeah, ugh, my earnings, $13.85, and I probably thrifted it for 10, so I made a whopping $4. Not my best purchase, and I usually don't grab Tommy Hilfiger because they don't sell very well for me, and this just solidified my normal decision. I'm just gonna stay away from this brand. If you have luck with it, drop it in the comments. I'd like to hear what kind of styles sell for you. What is your luck with it? Um, maybe I'm just grabbing the wrong things. I don't know. I don't know. And I guess I don't really do a lot of research into the brand. I just, um, I just remember like, you know, back in late 90s and early 2000s, it was a happening brand. Like people liked it, but now it's just kinda, I don't know if it's considered like a mall brand. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, next bundle. So these are, there is a bolo in here. And the first item is an Air, Air Blaster Kids Ninja Suit in a Galaxy Medium. This sold for $30 in the bundle. And the reason why I think that this is a bolo is Air Blaster is kind of a, like a snowboard brand. And our kids love wearing their ninja suits, but their ninja suits, no joke, retail anywhere from $100 to $160. I know that is so crazy. All it is is a thermal under layer, but they're so cool. They have very cool prints. They always have a hood. They have a zipper down the front and then they actually have a zipper down the waist so that it's easy for kids to just unzip and go to the bathroom in the winter. It's been a lifesaver. My girls absolutely love them and I would add this into your bolos. I have sold two of these so far and the first one I think sold for about 45. I'm okay with that. I, although like, I'm not sure if you'd be able to thrift these. I'm not, I've never found this out in the wild. Also they're like snowsuits and any of their winter wear, always worth picking up always. Okay, 
Bundle sold for $56. There's two pieces. The second item in this bundle was a Philosophy Gray Batwing Turtleneck Sweater in a size small. I like Philosophy. It usually does pretty good for me. Uh, I'm usually able to get over $20, sometimes up to $35 or $40, depending on the style. All right, next bundle was a two-piece bundle. This was a Paradox Technical Shell Jacket in a size medium. I have had this for almost a year. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Happy to see that one go. And the second item in this bundle was a Vintage Northern Reflections Pastel Yellow Sweater in a size large. I thrifted this not too long ago, and I really stuck to my guns on dropping the price. Like I did not want to drop it below 30 because I feel that this ja this sweater, especially because it was um, men's sizing, it was very oversized, no stains, it was awesome. Someone saw the value. So she paid $35 for this bundle and I am happy letting that jacket go for $5 because I have been sharing it for a year. I'm done with it. We'll see you next time. Bye, Felicia. Couple more sales happening. So next one, and they're good ones too. Next one was a race car reverse tie-dye graphic short sleeve shirt in an XL. I tie-dyed this myself not too long ago. It sold for 22 bucks. I like it. It actually had a moose on it that was like driving a, a car. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. I definitely look for anything kind of race car related that I can reverse tie-dye and probably paying only a couple bucks for the item. Uh, next bundle was a two-piece bundle. This sold for $30. It was a denim forum black basic shirt in a small, recently thrifted this, and a vintage knit abstract long sleeve sweater in a size small. And this was for my recent bins haul. So she sent, she asked if I would do $30 and give her a shipping discount. And I normally don't give shipping discounts under $50. Uh, we had a little bit of bantering back and forth and I just let it go because you know what? I paid a dollar for that sweater and I was happy with it. It was such a cute outfit. I took a look at her closet and I was like, I'm gonna let her have this because she had really cute clothes and yeah, I was just feeling good. Also, my sales were super low, so I was agreeing to like anything yesterday. Okay, next sale was a two-piece sale. This sold for $45. In the bundle was a TNA lamb's wool sea to sky knit cardigan sweater. Uh, this was listed at $33. It was a size medium. I recently thrifted this like a week ago, so it was a pretty new listing. And then also a pair of G-Star ripped distressed dark wash shorts in a size 26. She sent me an offer on the shorts and right away I kind of hopped into a bundle with her and I said, I'm gonna accept your offer for $20, but you're already paying shipping and I'll give you a discount on the second item. So do you wanna add another item? And uh, she actually fell asleep and she said that, she, like I messaged her and I was like, I haven't heard back from you, so I'm gonna accept it. And no sooner did I accept her first offer, she was like, no, no, I wanna add something. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to cancel the sale, relist it, and she added in this sweater. So this cool. I turned a $20 sale into a $45 sale just by sending a simple message to her. I hope she loves these. They're both super cool items. Okay, next item. And this was a death pile item. I had no idea that this was a brand. Do not sleep on this brand. It is called Lucy and Yak. I did, had no idea what the comps were. And when I actually looked up comps, I couldn't believe what they were selling for. So most of them were selling from 45 to upwards of $100. They retail for about 120 Canadian, I think. And they have various different styles. They do mostly like rompers and jumpers and things like that. They are out of I think it's out of New Zealand. I had an Eddie organic corduroy boiler suit. This sold for $40. Now, I did have this listed much higher at 75 and I did drop the price yesterday because I had a ton of likes on it. And this was a counter offer to someone who received my price drop. Now, I feel like she sent me an offer for 30 and I responded with 40 and she accepted it. I feel like that's how it went down. I had like a slow sales week. It wasn't quite what I wanted and I was really trying to hit over a thousand dollars. So this is sometimes where you have to think, is it worth bantering, like countering back? Is it worth being like, no, I'm gonna try for 60 or I'm gonna try for 50 or is it better to either just accept their first offer or maybe just counter a little bit higher? She knew at $40 she was still getting a steal of a deal on this, on this jumper and I just wasn't willing to go any higher and lose the sale. I really wanted to get this sale. 
I pulled it out of a death pile. It came from the bins. I paid a buck for it. I was happy with it. Definitely my advice to you is either accept the first offer they send you or if you counter, be prepared that they may walk away and you have to make that decision. Now the last sale on Sunday was a vintage Derek Alexander leather woven wallet that sold for $25. I did feel like maybe there was more value in this wallet but I literally have had no bites on it and I've had it listed for quite a few months so I accepted it, I'm okay with that and excited to see it go. Okay, so that wraps up the week. Now I wanna go over why I think my week was a little bit slower than the previous week. So if you haven't watched last week's, here it is, sales were really good. They were over $1,000, they were about 1,200. And I know I was doing tasks last week that I wasn't doing this week. One of the things was we were gone all last weekend. I did spend Monday doing some listing, but then I was gone Tuesday and Wednesday. So when I'm gone on Tuesday and Wednesday, I can't do any listing. All I can do is share my closet. I did come back Thursday, but I worked Thursday and then I had Friday off. But again, you're just kind of a mess trying to get things sorted out. My week didn't have very good pockets of time where I could list new items. And I'm not a firm believer in you have to list daily, but I am a firm believer in that you have to list consistently. So you need to spend at least a couple days a week and I ch I shoot for about four days a week that I'm adding new listings into my closet. Now I could hold things into my drafts. I just choose not to. I kind of plop 20 in at a time when I can get them done and hope for the best. I think last week my fail was that I didn't list a lot of new items and a lot of the items that I was listing earlier in the week were still like death pile items, which weren't always items that I absolutely loved and that's why they were down in my death pile. I had some really great sales, but I feel like there might be some things that are gonna be slower movers in there. Okay, so that's reason number one and that's something that you can apply. If you're wondering why sales have been slow, have you been listing daily? Have you been putting out fresh items? Do you relist? So something that you can do as well, and I am guilty of not doing this enough. You can relist items that are stale and rather if you don't have new inventory to list try relisting older stuff so our sell through rates pretty high in our in our closet i actually don't usually have a lot of items that are older than 2 months that i can relist although i do think i'm coming on probably 20 to 30 items in the bottom that i I should check now because I might be able to do that. But generally my items move pretty quick and I don't have this option. If you do have items that have been stale and they've been in your closet for more than 60 days, relist them. If you're a seller on eBay and you have items that are nearing that 28 or 30 day, I can't remember how long it is when they expire, maybe 29 days. Anyways, you can cancel it and sell similar and relist it and it just kind of refreshes the item. It's a good way to just refresh your items. Okay. And then the last reason why I think that maybe sales were a little bit slow, in those days where I was away, I wasn't able to share as much. I don't know if you find this, but the days that you're out like crazy sourcing, are you sharing your closet as much? I find it more difficult. Now, I definitely don't share my entire closet every time I share. I'll tell you what I do. I generally sort it either by price and I'll sort it so that it's like highest to lowest. I'll list maybe my top 100 items or I'll list to, I'll organize my closet, or not organize, but filter it, right, by just in, and I'll only share my top uh, 100, so just my fresh items. When I say share your closet multiple times a day, I generally don't share my whole closet, and I should say that because I think people are like, how the heck does she share her whole closet however many, like three to five times a day? I don't. I I look at those items that are at the bottom and think, well, obviously no one likes them, so I'm not going to put the effort into sharing them. I just hope that they get bundled into another bundle when someone's making a purchase. What you can do to speed up your sharing if you're in kind of a time crunch is just either filtering by highest price to lowest. I like to just share my highest price ticket items, hope that someone likes them. Or you can go from just in and just share your fresh items that you've just listed, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Totally up to you. But these are some good tips to help you. And one of those tasks, again, like I said, that I think contributed was that I just didn't share my closet enough and at strategic times. Strategic times to me are times where there's a lot of traffic on the Poshmark app. If you are on the app and you're noticing you're getting a lot of follows, a lot of shares out of your closet or a lot of likes, that means the app's busy. You need to get on there and share your closet because that means people are on it and they're shopping and looking and doing things. 
Okay, that's it. Those are my tips. I hope you like this video. If you found value, if you could just give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Also, if you're not a subscriber, tap that little subscribe button, hit the bell, and make sure you sign up for all the notifications. This way they'll let you know anytime I post new content. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.